Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you enjoy what's going on in here and what I'm putting out for you guys. We're working. As you can see, this place is like a bomb went off. I've That 4.8 I just took apart. You see the cam over there? I kicked that to the side. That's going to get dealt with on another day. I got no reason to even mess with that anymore right now. I'll worry about that later. We have been concentrating a lot on the green car. Because now it's mid-January, I probably have like a solid two to three weeks of work on that car before I were to get everything just about done up and running again. I want to bring that car, I want, once April 1st comes, I want that car to be ready to go. Start it up, go get the cage certified, go make some license passes and gets, go, and gets going, because hopefully... I can get an 850 tune-up in that car, get that car to go that, and then go down to the Hail Mary Derby. Fingers crossed. That's that's my goal right now is to be at the Hail Mary Derby. I am not competitive in any sort of the classes there, but I just want to go. Looks like a great time. Well, I've been able to sell a lot of parts recently, a lot of Team Z stuff and everything. So I've been able to purchase parts because that's the reason why I sell parts on the side is literally so I could just build this car. Um... I've had an influx coming in. You can see all the boxes here. I'm still waiting on a bunch of stuff. Shipping is still screwing me. And that is holding everything up. I mean, some of the stuff here took weeks to come in. But we're, we're moving. And the biggest problem right now is half this car is done. Let me rephrase that. Half of every little piece is done. <laughs> Half the turbo kit's done, half the intercooler's done, half the radiator setup's done, half the tubing is done, half the fittings are done. It, it, it's just half, 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 and it's because I need parts. So I went on a spree, I bought some stuff, messed up ordering some stuff. Um, the hot side, I'm putting a double slip. Uh, if you've seen them, it's not a flex, it's, it's not a bellow, it's none of that. I don't trust any of that stuff. So what it is, it's, it's literally three pieces of pipe, and you weld to this one, and you weld to that one, and it slips over this one. It, it's confusing as hell, but we'll go over it when I actually go to weld it. It's something I can show you, I can't describe to you. But I got recommended to order from uh, Stainless Headers Manufacturing. I actually talked to them a couple of times, and very nice over there, good customer service. Because my dummy messed up and bought a single slip the first time. And when I realized it, I called and like, yeah, that already shipped. So I had to order a double slip. So I got a spare single slip laying around. But from what I can tell, it's already nice quality. All right. Um, what else? Oh, benchmark abrasives. You guys know it. It's my favorite. You know, these guys are the best. I, they got so much good fabrication equipment. So I got more of their um, flap discs. They do a promotional every once in a while where you get it for free and do all that, but I had to buy it because I've done it so many times. But yeah, I got a whole set of flap discs. These come in super duper handy for any sort of metal grinding. You'll want these, I promise. Well, oh yeah, I bought a new set of crimpers for all the Holly terminals. And um, I stumbled across these, I think, um, you know, on our race wires, put this out. And what it is, it's an I wish, a, a wish, I wish, whatever, how you pronounce it. But these are solely just for, I mean, I'm sure they're for other stuff, but they're for the Holly terminals that go into the ECU because I have to do a bunch of wiring. And um, these go from 18 gauge to 28 gauge. Part number is sn-28b i'll be excited to use these things and um you know it, it beats the uh 300 holly crimpers i can't bring myself to spend 300 dollars on a set of crimpers i don't do this for a living so also my buddy from uh monkey fab mike i placed an order with him i got a whole bunch of he's got these really good aluminum quarter 20 standoffs i always buy extra 
because you need four by six. I also got some 3 8 MPT weld bungs for my intake air temp sensor. And I got, these are my favorite. This is an intercooler. I think I showed you guys on the four inch one. It's an intercooler pipe end stub. Well, I can't remember exactly what he calls it, but your pipe butts up to it. You weld the inside of this and then you can clamp your, uh, clamp for your rubber boot over this and it won't slide off instead of like sitting there and buying a bead roller or welding like i used to do i used to put like four fat beads on the end of the tube so the thing wouldn't pull off but these are only a couple of bucks so that's why i bought these these are slick but if you buy these make sure you weld the inside if you weld the outside it can slip off <laughs> so i have one of these on my four inch already now this is for the other side of three and a half um yeah i got all this is all from mike I got a thing. I just keep trying to buy fittings and everything. I don't know if I showed you. Did I show you guys the intercooler stubs I bought from him? I don't know if I showed you guys this in a previous video. Since I'm building my own intercooler, he offers these really cool stubs that already have a flange on them for the rubber boot. And it gives you a nice weld flange as well. So I got a four inch and a three and a half. These things are slick. That's going to make your life so much easier instead of trying to weld a piece of 16 gauge to it that's bead rolled and, and all that nonsense. What else? We got a whole bunch of crap. Oh, one of my favorites. The Tim McAmos radiator mount kit. See that? There's the part number. And it, it's really cool because I, I did this on the first setup in the car before going to a rear mount. What it does is, so you weld bungs, those standoffs, to your radiator, you know, this far apart, and you weld these sleeves into your, mine go into the lower crossbar, the radiator crossbar. You weld that sleeve in, and then this slides in, and you have this ring here. So, so once you weld this in, though, it's going to be tighter on the inside. So then you cut this down, and you weld this sleeve as a stop. So you have that sleeve and then your radiator clicks in you drill two holes and you got two quick pins to hold it in i saw this in one of tim McAmos's videos and i was like I, I gotta have it gotta have it i get a lot of my fabrication tubing from ace race they have some pretty high quality tube and they're good prices look at that huh how's that intercooler pipe coming that is beautiful. Not no super raw finish with, it's got all the freaking uh, bend marks in it. Looks like trash. Nice piece, like 20 bucks. And here's that intercooler piece. And that goes over the end. See? And you just weld on the inside of it. And there you go. You got your slip for your uh, rubber boot. So I got a three and a half inch piece because I think this is all I needed to finish out my intercooler on the turbo side three and a half inch pie cut. I don't have a horizontal bandsaw yet, so buying these is just easier for me. Three and a half inch aluminum pie cuts because I'm, I'm gonna have some tricky bends there. You know, cutting stainless is so much fun, but they do such a good job on them. I mean, look at the cut, nice and deep bird and everything. They're nice and perfect, beautiful. And the last piece that I've gotten in, which it bothers the hell out of me, that I can't really find a supplier local, is a piece of uh, aluminum. Kind of beat up, but match everything else. This is uh, 8th inch, 125, 60, 61. Um, aluminum. I bought it off eBay. I think it was like 40 bucks. Two foot by two foot. Now I should be able to um, finish my intercooler out. Oh yeah, you see my welder's all apart. It's having a major issue with it. Yeah, nice. I got freaking 600 PSI in the bottle. And apparently 600 PSI is empty with this bottle. So I took it apart to clean up the uh, high frequency contacts in there, which were out of spec. Which I'll see if I can show you them. See that gold with the two nuts right here? Right here? And in between, there's two little points. But um, 
that's your high frequency contact and mine was crooked and it was like 45,000 it's supposed to be like 25 thousandths and straight on so hopefully I get better starts now I just got to put this all back together and I'm gonna go pick up a new bottle tomorrow and see if um, that's the issue but what we're doing here hold on I'll show you this all I, I made the fan mounts bolts to it really nicely i got a dash 16 welded on here um i was going to use well the dash 16 here but trying to come to the lower water pump is too much of a nightmare so that's going to get cut off welded shut we're going to turn this into a dual pass now that i did this i fucked up <laughs> that's my luck oh i guess it could fit there i don't know maybe i'll just drill a hole center and Weld this somewhere over here because I don't think I can put it up this high with a dual pass. So it's got to go somewhere in yonder. I might just cut this whole drain out and put it there. But it's going to come out. I'm waiting on a piece of uh, one and a half inch aluminum so I can stick it out because the fan trout's so big. Oh, that's that. That's the right here. There's all that dash 16 I was telling you about. It should be plenty long to go to the trunk. Intercooler can now get wrapped up. Maybe this place will get cleaned up one day. This is where we're at. I think this is right where we were at last time. I've actually redone this pipe three times now because I cut about two and a half inches out of it and straightened it up. I, uh, so that's how it's gonna be. I started working on this manifold, cut off the embossment, shaved it down, cut it. Look at those welds, huh? That's not, that doesn't come out too shabby. Got the V-band on there so I can start with this. I'm, I'm waiting on the double slip. I got a 90 and I'm waiting on a 45 because of the angle. This actually needs to come up first and then come out and then over. So I can see there's some stainless there. And I got new heater boxes. That's right. This is, I mean, these things are immaculate condition. Guy literally, I can't thank Craig enough. He pulled this out of his car. Look, he even taped the one bolt to it that goes on from the outside. He gave me all the, the nuts. Brand new heater core in it. I mean, look at this. This thing's in great condition. It's a little dusty, but it's otherwise in great, great condition. Gave me all the heater controls around here. I won't be using them because, oh, this is just a sticker, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Um, obviously, they're white, but yeah, I got everything. Because now I have a C, and the problem before was this whole drain is cut off from my box. This whole bottom is actually completely gone and it's been glued shut. So now I have a drain, and that's why I need a new one, <laughs> pretty much. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this box is in, in great shape. Look at that. Almost on my birthday. Well, not the year. September 6th is my birthday. September 6th, 1989. Very nice. But it, this box is... It's in really... Whoop, I probably just broke it. <laughs> it's in really good shape. I'm going to go get a bottle of Argon. Hopefully that fixes my welder. We're going to finish welding this all up. Oh, what I didn't say was you're probably like, Whoa, what are those mounts for? These mounts on the other side are for my AC condenser, which I don't even know where that went. <laughs> oh, <laughs> freaking blind as a bat. There's that. So it's got these, you know, flange. And I'll um, just drill those holes out a little bit. All right, let's pick back up with... Well, then that bad Larry up and, and seeing how it goes. I just got to weld those four bungs on. I got to weld the dash 16 fitting on and make a dual pass. And that's good to go again. Kind of jumping around here. I know it guys, but uh, I got to get this um, bead lock rings off so they can go out to uh, the baddest guy in the game, Joe, Joe at uh, DCF. Dieter's custom finishing so you can get polished. I'm so tired of the black rings. Um, 
they're gonna get sent out. Both of them are gonna get sent out with the turbo housing. A lot of people like black. I'm over it. I liked black years ago. Polish is where it's at now. Center caps for the SVE wheels. I think I showed you guys these when I first got them. I'm, actually, I don't know. Oh, I've put all my miles on these. I've been driving around on my drag radios. Nothing wrong with it. They work fine, but they're expensive and you wear them out fast. So I bought these SVE anniversary knockers just to uh, stick on for the time being. God, it's dark over here, I know. It looks stupid. <laughs> they sit kind of far in because of my narrowed rear, but I'm going to stick a one-inch spacer in there and see how it looks like. But I put a uh, I put some wide tires on it. I put some 315s on the back of it. So at least it'll look cool. <laughs> but I bought the cheapest tires I could find, and they were like Toyos something, something, somethings. But they're 315, 35, 17. They just look weird. I'm not used to seeing the polished, big polished wheel. So those will be my street tires. Because I'm not rich and I can't afford to replace these as much as they need to be. So this is going to get out and go get polished as well. I'll take out my fitting. But Joe's, Joe's the man. He's going to take care of this. He's going to make this thing look like a million dollars. Bullseye power, baby. Only turbos all run. Made, actually, it should say, actually made in America. Unlike Precision, Borg Warner, Garrett, blah, 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 Turbonetic, blah, 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 you know. Don't hate me for saying that. Because it's, tr it's true. Now, I could honestly personally care less what turbo you run on your car. Don't care. But if you're asking me, I'll tell you to put a bullseye on it. I almost bought some, nothing wrong with Borg Warner. I had a Borg Warner on this before. Nothing wrong with them. Force induction, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with a Garrett. This big old honking Larry now. Whew. Yeah. Look at this thing, huh? Now, 24 by 16. Um, It was 50 bucks. Universal, it's just a universal uh, AC condenser. And it's big enough. I wanted a big enough condenser so I won't have issues. My main goal is going to try to keep the closed bumper. We'll see if it, it happens. If not, I'll cut the bumper open. Not what I want to do, but it's what needs to be done. All right, on to the flip side. Oh. Now, when I had this in the car, the old outlet was right here. And I had a problem because... The water neck is like right here for the thermostat housing. And it just, there was no way I was going to get an AN hose on there at all. So I cut it off, welded it shut, bought some inch and a half aluminum tube. There's a dash 16 fitting that matches this. Looks just like this under here. Turned it into a dual pass. So it makes it more efficient. Welded on brackets for this fan. This fan is for a 95 Thunderbird. I think I said that before. 95 T-Bird. I can start making my radiator hoses again. I have so much dash 16 from the old radiator rear mount, from the intercooler, the old air to water intercooler, and stuff like that. So, bink, bink, done. And that's done. Now, my tube doesn't fit that I have. I showed you guys I flipped it. It doesn't fit. I'm hoping if I drop this down an inch, it'll clear. I think I just need about an inch. I'm also going to weld... Uh, eighth inch mpt bung in here for a pressure sensor because you want to get your pressure coolant pressure from the radiator from an end tank it's the best instead of like the side of the head where it pulsates a lot this thing has been a giant pain in my ass mainly because i've never made an intercooler i've never made end tanks before but at the end of the day it's not bad i mean i've actually welded this pretty good Obviously, you see it's not complete. It's not even welded to the core. It's just tacked on. Now, we need to replicate this end tank. Originally, I had a different design, but that was with a different turbo location. 
So we need to replicate this end tank on the other side. And of course, I already threw out the templates. <laughs> Silly me. But it should be pretty easy to make new ones. So I got one template for this part. So we gotta cut that out, which I wanna sit just like that. Yeah, nice. It's nice to have the uh, crevasse. A nice good bead, good bead. You want like half and half is from all the research I've been doing. You know, you don't want it laid on top because then you only got that little bit. If you do it half and half, you get better penetration. It's all from the little bit of research I've done about it. So we're going to get the piece of aluminum out. We're going to start making templates. Let's make templates first. Then we'll get the piece of aluminum out and start tracing them over on that. The videos are too long and... A lot of you don't care that it's long. So I got another end tank done. Fucked up again. Cut this on the uh, wrong side so it's not on the outside. And of course it's welded on the wrong side. Scratch the crap out of it. So I'll probably give these a good scuff and a sand. Get them nice and even. So this is 125-6061 aluminum. And um, I didn't really go over how to cut this out but as you can see i got like all my woodworking tools out here so you can see i got a jigsaw with a nice big fat blade on it i got my circular saw and i got uh the um uh arm saw not the radial arm saw because it don't radial the saw over there the cool thing about aluminum is you can cut it. I think I've gone over this. You can cut it with normal woodworking blades. And it goes through it like butter. Nice clean cuts and beautiful. So I made all the templates up. I traced it out onto the sheet aluminum with a pick. And uh, I just cut them out. Now I had a 4 inch hole saw which is now whooped. I've had this thing for years. But the teeth are whooped on it. So I was able to do 4 inches on the other side. Because one whole end tank is done and welded on. Now, this is my first time ever building an air cooler. I'm still not the greatest at welding. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I don't have any issues and blow a tank off. But I, this side's a four inch. This is going to be on the driver's side. This is a three and a half inch. But I think I showed you guys before. These are uh, intercooler stubs from... My buddy Mike at Monkey Fab, he makes these. These things are these things are relatively cheap. I don't think that, I can't remember how much they were, but they're worth every penny over trying to cut a tube, flare the end, or weld a bead on it. And these things got a nice weld lip on them. They welded great. Uh, we're going to put this aside. I didn't have a three and a half inch hole saw, so all I did was. Um, I got a big drill bit, <coughs> you know, it was like three quarter or one inch or whatever it was. Oh, it's in there. I doing a bit, I chalked it up, drilled it all the way around, and then I just took the jigsaw, cut it all the way out, and then hit it with the deburring bit to get it to seat and nice tight fit. So we're going to clean this all up. We're gonna burn it in. You see, it's a nice tight fit. If you really wanted to weld it on the back side, obviously I'm not gonna to try to do that now with it uh, all welded together, but you could take this plate, cut your hole, weld it on the back side, and then it would be, you know, beautifully on the outside, but I ain't about that life. Honestly, because I didn't think about it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's not too shabby for learning how to do it on YouTube. <laughs> not bad. Now, I wish I could make the rest of it go that good. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna mess it up somewhere, I guarantee, I guarantee it. That might be my best welds in a long time right there. A little blowout right there, but man, that came out pretty nice, huh? Monkey fab for the win. All right, we gotta weld that onto that. I'm not gonna bore you with it. It's a lot of welding and I gotta cool down the torch in between. 
I've never wanted a water cooler before today, but running these long beads right here, that torch gets hot. So I'm gonna stop this and we'll see the final piece. Finish up the intercooler. I think it was a lot of work and a lot of welding. It's cold in this garage today, if you can't tell. I'm trying not to work in here at all. Uh, it's like nine degrees outside and I've never finished insulating. As you can see, nice and open. Oh, I got my heater on. What are you doing in here? So, had some hiccups there. But, oh, don't worry about that. I'm going to go over that in a different video after this. Well, yeah, it's taking shape. It's great. Looks great. Like usual, guys, thank you for watching. Truck, thank you for watching. Get in your cold ass garage. I'm gonna go work on the other side where it's warm. Start working on your hot rocks. Spring is fast approaching. Have a good day.